Hello, it's Mr. Turek, and today I'm going to walk you through the eraser drawings. Uh, the thing these two drawings share is that you're going to use an eraser to sort of uh, erase away to the white of the paper from a built-up charcoal wash or just sort of a, a wash of tone. Um, these two choices kind of uh, have the same technique, but the way you use them and the subjects kind of differ. Uh, your first choice is the photocopy drawing. Uh, for this drawing, the subject will be you, of course, or a photocopy of you or an object that you want to draw um, that you'll make on the copier. Uh, and then you're going to use a, a, a charcoal wash and uh, just other kinds of charcoal to build up your tone. Uh, and then you'll use an eraser to go back to the white of the paper. Uh, the size paper you'll use is 18 by 24 inches and make sure you have some kind of border around those edges. and uh, you'll represent yourself, your subject, um, in as realistic a way as possible. Here are some examples of a uh, subtractive tone. Uh, for these drawings, these artists uh, blacked out their entire subject, uh, like, I'm, like I was talking about before, and they used an eraser to sort of build up the highlights. Um, if you're wondering why anybody would do it this way, you sort of have to do it yourself to experience why it's a better way or uh, a a good way to build up tone or you know draw a portrait. Um, these these portraits are rather dark. Uh, yours can be kind of dark like these and kind of expressive like these but uh, again these are just examples of this kind of technique applied to a portrait. Here's some examples of a subtractive tone with a still life. Uh, these are student examples from years, years past. Uh, again, you can see the charcoal wash is in the background for the most part, and then uh, students are using an eraser or they're using their charcoal to lighten or darken certain areas. And again, you can be expressive if you want, but uh, notice also there are um, no contour lines here. There's just transitions in value, which is another key component of this assignment. Uh, here's kind of a step-by-step -step of a uh, subtractive tone. Uh, this artist does this style very, very tightly, and um, Again, yours doesn't have to be this tight, but it's a great example of how to build up tone. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see he used a charcoal wash to sort of block out the whole background and all the objects, and then he sort of started erasing away some of the highlights at the start there and darkening some of the shadows. And again, with each successive pass, he darkened or lightened certain areas to uh, add definition to them. Uh, you can do it really tight like this and add layers and layers of tightness to sort of build everything up or you can just sort of keep it loose at the start and then um, only darken things at the end. It's totally up to you. There's a billion different ways to do this technique but this is just one. Here's some student examples of uh, the project when it's done. And of course there's a wide variety of ways to photocopy yourself. Uh, some students like to have more of their face visible uh, some students are kind of silly with it. Um, some students didn't even want to do a portrait, so they used an object. It doesn't really matter if you use an object. Uh, I encourage you to use your face because it is kind of fun and the results are really interesting. Um, make sure you, that uh, before you do your, uh, your reference or make your reference on the photocopier that you put a blank sheet of acetate over the copy surface so that you don't smudge it up with fingerprints or anything. Um, acetates right next to the copier in a white box. If you're having trouble using the photocopier or finding the acetate, call me over and I can help you make your reference. And again, the way these students started this project out is a lot like the examples I showed you. Uh, they took a charcoal wash and, and grayed out the entire thing. And then they erased or they darkened areas that were light or dark uh, from that 50-50 wash. Your other choice is a Conti value portrait. And um, for this, you're going to use a, a, a Conti crayon. And a Conti crayon is a kind of a red chalk crayon that's very, very hard, very dense pigment. Um, it's been used for hundreds of years, and it, it's just a really good kind of drawing instrument to use. And uh, for this project, you, you, can, you can make your own washes and, and sort of use your eraser or the Conti crayon to lighten or darken areas. Um, the way you're going to make your washes in this is a little bit different, though. Because there is no powdered Conti crayon, uh, you're going to make your own powder if you want uh, by using sandpaper to sort of create some dust and then smooth, smear that dust around. Or you can use the side of the Conti crayon to sort of uh, shade in whole areas um, with the crayon if you want. Uh, again, full sheet of paper, two-inch border, 
And then for your reference for this drawing, you're going to use a photograph of somebody uh, that shot with a single light source. It has to be a real person. It can be you or a classmate or if you have a friend you want to bring in who has like a study hall or something. We're going to take a high resolution photo of that person uh, sitting with a single light source on their face. And that sort of uh, makes it easier for you to draw them because a lot of the information has been condensed down to you know, just lights and darks and medium grays instead of a bunch of different kinds of subtle grays. Uh, the process we're going to look at now is um, uh, a process developed by uh, Robert T. Barrett. He's an artist who uses this subtractive tone process rather well and his drawings are a great example of how you can use subtractive tone to create the form very easily. Um, so again, if you remember past projects, this should look familiar to you. This is an awful lot like a gesture drawing. And again, his style of gesture drawing is very different probably than your style, but you, you kind of want to start out with a, a brief gesture of where your portrait is and where the parts are before you do your wash. So that's what he's doing right here. He's, he's just blocking in the basic outline here and there and maybe a little bit of value here and there before he adds his wash. Here he's adding a bit more detail. You can see some of the smudges here. Uh, a little bit more de definition in the head, the face and such. And now he's adding the wash. And the wash is, is very easy to do. You can use a uh, powder pastel like he is or you can just sort of create your own powder by taking your contra crayon and, and rubbing it up against some sandpaper to create some dust. Uh, you can also just take the, the side of the pastel and just sort of like uh, use side strokes to sort of block in whole areas of tone if you want. Um, and then from there you can erase or darken certain areas. So here he's blocking in more tone. Uh, you can still see the outline too through this uh, sort of smudge. And, and if you don't press hard enough it, it might not show through but for the most part you're going to be pushing and pulling with this tone throughout the entire drawing. So don't worry if you lose some of your outline. Now you can see he's starting to erase and, and sort of darken certain areas. And again, you can, you can erase pretty much anywhere. He's erasing highlights on the body, and then he's also erasing the background to sort of bring out definition in the lower thigh. Again, he's lightening and darkening uh, uh, certain parts. Um, you're just going to continue to add detail here. Remember how loose this uh, drawing started out. Um, you, can, you can have an extremely loose drawing and then push and pull certain parts here to correct them. Uh, just sort of, sort of think in those loose terms. It doesn't have to be perfect when you start out. You're gonna make it perfect as you continue to shade. Again, adding more detail. Um, just sort of moving around the drawing and, and darkening certain areas, lightening others with the eraser. More definition, more detail. Here's some more examples of his work. Again, he's a uh, using kind of the same process and sometimes he uses different colored pastels but for the most part the results are the same. He has a, a phenomenal sense of the, uh, proportion and the human form but he also has a sense of like just form and, and value and how that creates a sense of a three-dimensional presence in the people he draws. Here's an excellent example of how to do the transitions through just value. Now he does have some outlines in here, but for the most part he's making his transitions in through uh, lights and darks. Uh, so you know each edge is created through either a light value or a dark value. And you can sort of darken the background if you need an edge to transition if you want, but um, for the most part try to try to stay away from outlines and just use transition transitions in a value. Another great example uh, from Mr. Barrett. Um, Again, in the past, I've, I've done this project and required students to be like facing forward and, and so that you can see most of the face. Uh, nowadays, I, I really could care less how you pose your subject. If you want to pose them, you know, like this sitter is like turning around or, or partially visible, you can do that if you want. It um, doesn't really matter if you hide hands or something like that. I, I don't care. Uh, play around with your sitter if you want a more unconventional pose. Here's some more uh, student examples. Again, these are done on a colored paper, some of these, and they use white and black charcoal. Now, if you want to try this with your Conti crayon, you can. We have, a, I believe, some white charcoal that you can use or um, some white Conti crayon that you can use. 
And these are just different poses, different uh, ways of using the light source. The one in the lower left is a very creative use of the single light source. They're doing it from below instead of from the side. You can do that if you want. Uh, here's some uh, student photographs that were used as references for drawings. Um, you'll notice that there's a single light source and uh, maybe a little bit of light pouring in from the windows, but for the most part it, it's just one direct light source on them. And then here are uh, some student uh, drawings. Um, so notice that you know the proportions aren't perfect, but for the most part the students are doing a good job of capturing how light hits the face. And, they're, and they spend a lot of time kind of developing those shadows, those complex shadows um, throughout the face. So that's kind of one of the main goals with this project is, you know, of course, worry about the proportions, worrying about making a representational drawing, but, you know, explore those new areas, those new things you haven't really thought about before, like what, what does happen when somebody's, you know, turned three quarters and the light source is off to the right, like, what do those shadows look like? Um, so yeah, have fun with that in this project.